गुड इवनिंग टू एवरी वन सो वी हैव लर्न ऑल हाउ टू डू द इंडायरेक्ट ऑफ्थलमोस्कोपी बट डॉक्यूमेंटेशन इज ऑल्सो एन इम्पॉर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट ऑफ इंडायरेक्ट ऑफ थलमोस्कोपी नाउ पी जीज आर सेटिंग जस्ट आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू आस्क वाई फंडस ड्रॉइंग इज इम्पॉर्टेंट कैन एनी वन आंसर दैट for the reference okay so for the pgs is definitely to pass the exam so <laughs> you have to know the your funders drawing fellows can tell like anyone can answer that why funders drawing is important anyone can volunteer devat so that's very correct actually the funders drawing there are two purposes are there first of all we should know how the disease is progressing so if we draw today and we see next time so we can just correlate that how is the disease progressing secondly for the surgical planning so in funders drawing there are few anatomical landmarks which you should always remember there is a optic disc then there is a macula retinal blood vessels then the vortex vein which we termed as a the ampulla of the vortex vein we term as a equator then the ora serrata and the long ciliary nerves in the vessels so uh, in this we can see that the for the post graduates this is a optic disc then this is a macula then Uh, the, the short ciliary nerves is very difficult to identify actually uh, but you can see the vortex vein ampulla and that can suggest as a equator and many times by indentation you can see the ora now this is a modified amsler du bois chart in this there are three concentric circles are there uh, these are basically optic disc markings now for the right side always remember that for the right side Uh, you have to draw on the right side for funders drawing and the left side optic disc should be drawing in the left side funders drawing the inner circle it uh, represents the equator the middle one circle it represent the ora and the outer one represent the pars plana now the pearls for funders drawing the very few important points which you should remember while drawing a funders uh, because uh, when we do th when we follow these things it become very easy to document your findings so first of all first of all see the disc and then follow a vessel to the periphery that is far most important especially in the case which are being posted for the scleral buckles then you should not think about too much what is superior what is the inferior what is nasal and what is temporal while drawing first see the disc and the vessels then just remember that whenever you are asking the patient to look up you are seeing the superior part when you are asking the patient to look down you are uh, seeing the inferior part and similarly the nasal and the temporal part at the same time whatever appears closer to the observer in the condensing lens is peripheral so that is always anterior so this is a basic principle you should always remember this comes very important while you do the lasers the the last is that the macula should be examined and should be seen at the last so that it helps in the patient cooperation so this is what i asked uh, that when we are drawing usually we give a uh, like to avoid confusion we can ask the patient to see uh, straight up so i continue again so we can ask the patient to look up and then we the drawing sheet uh, there are markings are there the, according to the clock hours the 1 to 12 so you can put the 12 o'clock position toward the feet side and the 6 o'clock position toward the head side and then you can draw whatever you are seeing so that will prevent the the laterality issues so now the various colors coding is being used while drawing the funders so for the red solid we usually document by the retinal arterioles the new vascularization the vascular anomalies usually the attached retina is being uh, color coded with the red then the vascular tumors like the hemangiomas the hemorrhages 
uh, the whenever there is an open interior of conventional retinal breaks, uh, so we usually uh, it document with the red solid. Then the open interior of the outer retinal holes in the retinoschisis, like this one, and the normal macula, we usually mark it as a red. Whereas the red cross, like the, this one, we usually see, uh, we usually document in cases of the GRT and uh, in the open portion of the retinal holes in the inner layer retinoschisis. Then the, another color comes, which is very important in fundus drawing, is a blue. So blue solid, we usually uh, document for a detached retina. The retinal veins is being uh, documented by blue. The outlines of the retinal breaks, uh, the outlines of the ora serrata, uh, the meridionals, uh, the, re the retinal granular tags and the tufts, the outline of the thin areas of the retina and the intraretinal cyst. The blue cross line is being used for the documentation of the inner layer of the retinoschisis, white without pressure, detached pass plana, uh, anterior to separation of the ora serrata, and the rolled edges of the, uh, or the inverted flap in GRT. Uh, we use also U blue color and that to be stippled or the circled or the interrupted lines. So the stippled one is used for the cystoid degenerations and the interrupted lines like this one is being used for, to uh, document that there's a change in the area or the folds of detached retina because of the shifting fluid. Then the green color comes. The green, anything in the vitreous, we usually document by the green color. So that may be in the opacities in the media, vitreous hemorrhage, vitreous membranes, the hyaloid ring, the IOFB intraocular foreign bodies, the cotton wool spots, the and the uh, neovascularization, if it is flat, we usually document by the red. But if it is elevated, we usually document by the green color. And the vitreous substitute, uh, which may be silicon oil or any gas. Then the green stippled or the dotted one are being used, like this one, being used for the asteroid hylosis. And when in documentation, like the peripheral retinal degenerations are there and there is a frosting or snowflake pattern is there. So in that case is also we use the green color in that way in a stippled manner. Then the brown color comes. The brown color is basically you use for to document the uveal tissue, the pass plana cysts, the ciliary processes, pigment beneath detached retina, pigment epithelial detachment, the choroidal melanomas, uh, nevus, metastatic or choroidal tumors, and the choroidal detachment. Brown outline we use for to prevent uh, to sh uh, show the edge of buccal beneath the detached retina that is being used in the brown outline, and the outline of the posterior staphyloma. The yellow color, uh, anything in, inside retina like the intraretinal, subretinal hard exudates, subretinal gliosis, deposit in the retinal pigment epithelium, detached macula in some retinal separations. The, we usually document the laser or the cryoedema edema with yellow color and the retinoblastoma. Yellow stippled color is being like this one is being used for drusen and yellow crossed, it has been not documented here, but it is uh, coloboma, we usually document by a yellow cross. The black color, uh, so black solid is being used as a hyperpigmentation as a result of previous uh, treatment either with cryo or laser or dithermy. The sheathed vessels, uh, pigment within the detached retina, uh, pigment within choroid or pigment epithelial hyperplasia with attached retina, or that it is a demarcation line is present within the spontaneously attached retina. Black outline we usually use to document the edge of the buccal beneath attached retina and the outline of a CRA. Now this is a drawing for the buccal, uh, while this is an intraoperative drawing. So uh, this represents the muscles. So this is a superior rectus, this is an inferior rectus, this may be medial rectus or lateral rectus according to the eye. Now these are the scleral tunnels, so we have to mark these scleral tunnels. So they can be marked as ST1 and ST2. Now this is a belt buccal and this is the scleral buccal. So we have to document like what kind of a size of a scleral buccal being used, either 276, 279. Then these are the anchoring sutures. So you, in the drawing, you have to mark the anchoring sutures, their position, how many anchoring sutures are there. Then this is the uh, 
uh, there's a band tie, so this is this documentation is also important because many of the time, if we have to remove the belt buckle, so we should know the position where the band tie has been tied. So this drawing is of utmost importance while doing the scleral buckle surgery. This circle is uh, inside the muscle or outside the muscle? Uh, sir, uh, uh, what view are you showing? So from the back side, from the like the globe is like this, and from this side, so the muscles insertion would be here, and the tunnels would be like below the like inside the M muscle insertion, sir. Uh, sir, the color coding is being uh, given in the American Academy of General. So they have um, specifically mentioned the color codings. Uh, regarding this, uh, sir, like buckle diagram. In this picture, the inner thing is posterior and the outer thing is anterior. Anterious. So the posterior buckle sutures, the bites are wider. Whereas anterior, they are drawn narrower. Yeah. And usually we put the knots anteriorly. So that's why the knot is anterior. For the, uh, somebody showed the techniques of indirect of thalmoscopy. Also, there is a mention, I don't know if you included that, how we can visualize the far periphery using a monocular technique. Uh, did, so who covered that? Prakar, did you go through that? I think some of your pictures were from uh, Benjamin Boyd's monograph, right? So that is an excellent reading material. I think whatever material you get it from, you can put up a recommended reading list so that everybody knows. Um, other situations for visualization is that so many times we have eyes with corneal opacity, nebular or uh, macular corneal opacities. You have to negotiate your way around it. So you'll have eyes with cortical spokes of cataract and you have to see through the chinks of clarity and uh, of course in uh, so for PG is like if you're seeing a case of BRVO you can use a green filter so tips and tricks like that you know you can maximize your findings uh, the also the nerve fiber layer defects are best seen in the green or red free filters uh, these things also the better you are at the indirect of thalmoscopy uh, it helps in your surgical ability also and uh, uh, the pre-op drawing is really very important. I think what Hitesh saw, simple things like how many um, oral bays do you see um, in one clock hour? That some of the fellows uh, still are not very familiar. That's very unfortunate. And uh, how do you, can you show that? Uh, from which clock hour to which clock hour uh, are those, uh, yeah. So here you can see uh, yes, so this is the right eye, it, yeah, so this is very, very pertinent and uh, you have those three in one clock hour, this is the correct depiction. Yes, sir. How to, uh, so now we get less of revision buckles, but previously those are very, very important things, how to show a buckle, previously done buckle with a detached retina right overlying it. Also, that brings to the point that a few days back I was discussing, there was no buckle, there was no hole seen in a regmatogenous RD. There were uh, subretinal gliosis. So there are reasons to believe that the configuration is regmatogenous, but you are not able to find the hole. In this situation, what to do? What would you revert to, Hitesh? You would fall back on what principles to find the hole? Link of rule, sir. Yeah. To still try and find the hole. Yes, sir. Right. Sir, surgical planning definitely gets improved if we. You have optics, you have all the wide angle cameras available to you. You can move the camera to the periphery. To document that, you know, what is it? How does this one happen? Like, friend. There are many centers. They've given up drawing altogether. People examine using a 
I came across a paper which says it's a lost art. Your indirect skills are invaluable in that uh, you can, uh, um, say you're doing an SOR, and uh, so previously it was more relevant. Now with MIVS, you know, it relevance is less because sometimes there is so much of emulsification of oil that you want to do an FG. So the thing is with 20 gauge, you want to make a third put or not, because that will lead to more conjunctival scarring and Oh, one more, and then suturing and suture-related issues, sclerotomy, hypotony. So when we were faced with such a predicament, we stuck to just two sclerotomies, take the indirect and do the FG with the indirect. So that's how, you know, it was, it had a bearing on what we used to do. Now it is like you have a 27 gauge or 25 gauge, it's not much of an issue, but it, uh, with the indirect you could still do a FG repeated FGs to get the uh, emulsified oil out. Yes. Yeah. NICU, you know, so for an RLP screening. So you may not always have a red cam or a shuttle. So these things, well, definitely. Sometimes you have to do the laser within the incubator when the child is there. So you have to employ all your all your skills to be able to. Thank you. Sir.